Hello, my name is Michael Gorman. I'm a professor in the Department of Psychology and a member of the Center for Circadian Biology at the University of California, San Diego. Today, I'm going to help you learn to read and interpret an actogram, an important tool in circadian rhythms research, but something that might seem a bit alien to someone new to the field. An actogram is a graphic depiction of the activity of a subject over days, weeks, or months. In the present case, we're going to look at the wheel running activity of a mouse over 32 days. An actogram enables us to draw conclusions about the internal circadian clock that resides in the animal's brain. We're going to feature three important phenomena in one actogram. Entrainment of an animal to a light-dark cycle, a free-running rhythm in constant conditions, and a phase shift change in the phase of a rhythm in response to a brief light pulse. Before we get to that, let's blow up a portion of the actogram outlined in red to see the details of what exactly is plotted here. Each line of the actogram is actually a traditional XY coordinate plot. On the Y axis is the amount of wheel running from complete inactivity or zero half revolutions per minute to 200 counts, or 100 wheel revolutions per minute. On the x-axis, we have time of day, from midnight, uh, passing over to 8 a.m., 16 o'clock, or 4 p.m., and the following midnight. On these actograms, we also often commonly indicate the lighting conditions that the subject is exposed to, and we, we may do so in one of two ways, or both. Up above, we have a rectangular bar that indicates the times of light and dark. Dark Night is indicated by dark from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And light, the daytime, is indicated by the white bar from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We may also show that in terms of shading on the actogram. So here we have day, and here we have night. The day is shaded, the night is not. And what we can see from this nocturnal animal is that during the day, the animal is completely inactive. It's not that the shading is covering activity. There isn't any activity to cover there at all. So completely inactive during the day and more active at night. Now these actograms are by convention double plotted. That means on each line of the actogram, we show 48 hours or two days of activity. The first day shown here, followed by the second day. Double plotting means also that each bit of activity is shown twice. We plot the second day of activity not only to the right of, of day one, but also directly below it. And day three then would be both to the right of day two and below it as well. Thus, except for the very first day of activity, everything appears twice on the actogram. This practice enables trends in the data to be seen more cl clearly over long periods of time. So now we're going to take these four days and scrunch them back up to their original size, and they'll be followed by the next 28 days of activity to produce this 32-day actogram shown here. Now, first what I want to do is focus on the first third of this experiment, under which the animal was exposed to a light-dark cycle of 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark for 14 days. That's shown here. Now, in this actogram, we've gotten rid of the designation of local time, 8 a.m. and, and uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and so forth, because different labs keep their animals on different lighting conditions. And so we don't want to specify things in terms of actual clock hour. Instead, we want to use a new uh, timing system called Zeitgeber time, which is expre expresses timing relative to the light-dark cycle. So a Zeitgeber is a time giver, and light-dark is what times or synchronizes the circadian system. By definition, we call the beginning of day Zeitgeber time zero, or ZT zero. Six hours later in the day would be ZT six, and the beginning of night would be ZT12. Obviously, the middle of the night would then be ZT18. So now with that terminology, we're going to begin to analyze this actogram in a little bit more detail. We're going to, um, when we analyze an actogram, what we like to do is to look for a phase marker. That is, some part of the rhythm which is very obvious and very uh, reliable from cycle to cycle. 
One of the most reliable phase markers is activity onset, or the time when the animal goes from being completely inactive to getting in that wheel and running for a long period of time. What you see is that all throughout the day, the animal is completely inactive, but after the lights go off, it starts to run in the wheel, and we call that activity onset. We can use the clock lab program depicted here to help us identify objectively activity onsets each day of this record. So we do that, we ask it to, to calculate those, and you'll notice when we go into analysis mode, the actogram turns green. That's of no importance for us, but it tells us that we're using this analytical tool. The individual activity onsets are shown as red dots, one for each day of the cycle. And what you see is that these activity onsets are almost perfectly vertically aligned. That means that activity onset is happening basically at the same time of day, just a few minutes after ZT12. The period of the activity is 24 hours, just like the light-dark cycle is 24 hours. And this alignment between the activity cycle and the light-dark cycle suggests that the activity cycle has been synchronized or entrained to the light-dark cycle. Okay, so now let's ask what happens if we eliminate the light-dark cycle? Well, we can do that by exposing the animal to continuous darkness, and that's shown here. So in, when the lights go, go off one night, instead of turning them on the next morning, we keep them off for the next two, three, four weeks of this experiment. And what we see, when we do that, what we see is that there's a subtle but important change in the pattern of activity onsets in the week that follows. Instead of the activity onsets being perfectly vertically aligned as they were when we had the light-dark cycle, Instead, what we see is that activity onsets are drifting a little bit to the left. That is, each successive activity onset is occurring a little bit earlier um, each cycle, each day. From that, we can infer that there is an internal sense of time which is persisting without a light-dark cycle, and that time is moving a little bit faster than it was under the light-dark cycle. In other words, the animal's internal sense of time is a little bit shorter than 24 hours. We can use clock lab to help us determine exactly how much shorter it is by fitting a line through the activity onsets in the first days of constant darkness. And when we ask clock lab to do this, what it tells us is that the onsets are occurring every 23.74 hours. The animal's clock is 23.74 hours long. Its free running period, or tau, has that length. Now, that tells us that there's an internal sense of time separate from the light-dark cycle. If there's no day-night cycle in which to say what time it is, it's ZT0 or ZT12, how do we refer to time in the absence of a day or night? For that, we use something called circadian time, and it's very analogous to Zeitgeber time. So just as the beginning of night was labeled ZT12, we're going to call the beginning of activity onset, that is, when the animal gets in its wheel and does its nighttime thing, we're going to call that CT12 to correspond to ZT12. And each 23.7 hour period, the length of the cycle, will get divided into 24 circadian hours. So in circadian time, activity onset is given, is, is labeled as CT12. Halfway through the cycle, we would call it CT24, or ZT0, and three quarters through the cycle, we'd call CT6. Just a few hours after activity onset, well, that might be CT13 or CT14. Finally, I'd like to turn your attention to something that's happening in the last portion of the actogram. After about a week in constant darkness, we see that there's sort of an abrupt change in the rhythm. What happened here? Well, we perturb the rhythm by exposing the mouse to a light pulse, which shifted its rhythm in subsequent days. You have noticed that how reliable the free-running rhythm was. And if it had gone unperturbed, we would have expected the, the activity onsets to occur 15 minutes earlier each and every day, um, more or less indefinitely. But instead, what we see is this shift here. The reason we see a shift is we perturb the system by exposing the mouse to a light pulse 
on one occasion, two hours after activity onset on this day here. Thus, the light pulse began at CT14, and we simply turned on the lights for one hour. The lights acutely suppressed activity, but more important than that is how it changed the timing of activity onsets in the days following the pulse. Instead of activity following the line that we would have expected, what we see is that the next day, the animal got in its wheel maybe a couple of hours later, and then it began free running from that point on. We can use the analysis tools in Clock Lab to help us measure that shift and what hap happened subsequently. So we can now analyze these activity onsets here and ask Clock Lab to estimate the free running period, and it's the same as it was before. But we can also ask Clock Lab to compare the red line, that is, what was happening before the light pulse, with the blue line, what was happening after the light pulse, and which therefore can be attributed to the action of the light pulse. And when we do that, we look to see how much shifted to the right or to the left is the blue line relative to the red line, and that indicates the amount that the clock was reset. In this case, when we ask Clock Lab to make that calculation, we find that this displacement on the day after the shift is about 1.7 hours. Now, because it was shifted to the right, everything is happening later than we expect. We call that a phase delay, and by convention, we give that a negative number. So the phase shift is said to be negative 1.7 hours. Light pulses, if they're given at different times of the animal's circadian cycle, may cause the shift to occur in the opposite direction earlier. Those are called phase advances, but that's a topic for another video. So, in summary, if we go back to our raw actogram, what we can see, although not detailed, not highlighted with lots of annotations, are three circadian phenomena. Entrainment to a light-dark cycle, a free-running rhythm in constant conditions, and a phase shift elicited by a bright light pulse. I hope this example identifying these circadian features will help you in identifying similar features in other actograms that you may encounter.